Friends, today is Wednesday, the 2nd of December, and we continue in the Advent season, the very beginning of the Advent season. And it seems that this week, this first week of Advent, gives us the quintessential Advent readings. And today is the perfect day. First reading from Isaiah, second reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Once again, that same pattern of fulfillment, prophecy, fulfillment, Isaiah, looking ahead to the messianic times and those messianic times being fulfilled in the person of Jesus. Isaiah speaks of a rich food and drink feast, a great feast, which uh, a banquet and rich food and drink, uh, always a sign of those messianic times. And we see in the gospel the fulfillment of those messianic times, as Jesus provides with a couple of loaves and a few fish, a great meal, a great meal for the enormous crowd that is assembled before him, giving them food and drink for the journey. And Isaiah also speaks, uh, says, behold, behold our God to whom we look to save us, our God, to whom we looked to save us. And it says in the gospel today that the people brought to Jesus on the mountain, you know, the mountain is kind of the common theme here as well. The first reading from Isaiah, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts, and the gospel reading that says, Jesus went up the mountain and sat there and great crowds came and they brought to him, they brought to him the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others, placing them at the feet of Jesus, and he cured them. Jesus is the one that, as Isaiah says again in that beautiful reading, that he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says the Lord. And Jesus is the fulfillment of that prophecy, who brings comfort, who wipes away the tears from the faces of all people, all who are in need. Looking ahead to the messianic times present in the person of Jesus, Israel longed for those times. And in a sense, we do too, even though Jesus has come, but we live in that in-between time, in-between time between his coming in history and his coming in glory. But in a bigger sense, uh, in the gospel today, Matthew, the gospel of Matthew and Jesus anticipates the Eucharist, the Eucharist, the food, the food that we need for our journey the rich food and choice wine, rich food and choice wine, which we receive in the Eucharist. And in the gospel, it says that Jesus takes the loaves, gave thanks, broke them, gave them to the disciples to distribute. The words are Eucharistic, the same words that we use each day as we celebrate the Eucharist. Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave it, and that's what we do. We call it food for the journey, our food for the journey, and we mean that in a very literal sense, not just some kind of nice, um, oh, metaphor or whatever. No, we mean it literally, as we need food for the body, for the journey, we need food as well for the spirit, and that Eucharist is our food, food for the journey. And the responsorial psalm today, that beautiful Psalm 23, which speaks, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In burdened pastures he leads me, he refreshes my soul. And he lays out before us a great banquet. You spread a table before me, my cup overflows. In the gospel, it says that uh, when Jesus gave the bread and the fish, Afterwards, they gathered the fragments. There were seven baskets full of fragments, seven baskets full. God never is stingy with us, always gives us a superabundance. 
And we have that superabundance each day, each day in the Eucharist, each Sunday, a day to give thanks for the blessings and the gifts of these Messianic times. Wonderful readings <clears throat> today, wonderful meditations. Jesus who sees us, sees us, and the gospel says in a beautiful way, my, Jesus says, my heart is moved with pity for the crown. And thus he invites us to this great feast where we enjoy rich food and good to drink. <laughs> Hold that thought as we continue on this journey through Advent, awaiting our Savior. We'll see you tomorrow.